All right, our first example question here deals with a, a two-dimensional cross-sectional shape drawings. And what we need to do is identify what the cross-sectional shape would be based on how it intersects with the three-dimensional drawing it's sliced through. So for our first one, we'll call this one A over here, our plane, our two-dimensional slice, is parallel to the center of our figure. So it's just as if we'd, we'd kind of slice through it directly above the, the center line and went straight across. And we can see that the intersection, or the shape that's formed when that plane gets sliced through, is a square. So this one here, the answer is square. And that one's pretty straightforward. Here, we have our plane is slicing through our shape kind of from the side and then going and dividing this thing almost straight across from the midpoint of this edge over here to the midpoint of the far edge over here. And what we see when we take that slice through is a diamond or a uh, four-sided figure or a rhombus. There are about a hundred different descriptions of that, but diamond is very common. So a diamond or a rhombus is the shape that would actually be formed by that slice. And then finally, if we went through it at an angle, which actually is going through the top half of the figure and through the bottom half of the figure, we end up with a pentagon, a five-sided shape right here. One, two, three, four, five, wow, six, six sides, hexagon. Sorry about that. I can't count, but that's okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six sides is a hexagon. So the third shape here, hexagon, is our correct answer. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, this one here says, what kind of figure does this net create? Now, what we see here is that we have two, each of the sides that match, or I'll call it the same color so we can sort of keep them straight. So we have one big flat side, and then what looks like a divider between that flat side and the other one, and then another divider that would separate those two. So what we'd do is take this side right here, and we'd flip it up on top of this other one over here, and then take these two ends here and here, and they would be flipped up to form the faces front and back of what looks like a, a box. And if we take a look at it all folded up, we can see here's one of those big flat sides, like this one here. It folded up on top of the other one, so the other big flat side would be underneath. And then we have the two matching long ends, the purple ones here and here. So we got one that we can see and then another one that we can't see that will be back over there, right? And then, of course, we have our two sort of orange peaches color ones here that form the front and back of our box. And we have one that we can see and then one that we can't see back on the other end of the box. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at example C. Example C says, draw a net of the triangular prism below. Now I went ahead and sketched in our net here. Um, the prism itself looks like this, and I colored the the sides different colors so again we can keep them straight. If this is our triangular prism then we have one big flat face right here that is entirely uncolored, it's entirely clear. And it would sort of be the ramp face down the front of our shape um, that you'd sort of slide down if you, this thing was really big. And then the ends, the front and back of this shape are both triangles. And then we have another rectangle here and then a rectangle for the base. So if we form our, our net, we have that big rectangular base. We have the big front flat piece that's entirely clear. I made it just a little bit yellow here so we can keep it straight. And then the back piece is another rectangle, and the sides are both triangles. So we could take these two sides, fold them up, and then fold this one up around to the back of the figure, and this one flips up over on top of everything else to form our triangular prism. So there's an example of what the net should look like. And that's it. We're all done.